sort of circle back to that, I'm certainly of the, these things need to be regulated like utilities sort of school. But before we get there, I mean, so, okay, so specifically, what is the Ajit Pai FCC doing to overturn those rules? And yeah, let's just, again, let's just keep going slow. Yeah, what are they right. doing? Yeah, yeah. So um, uh, this order is fairly radical. So right. essentially it gets rid of all of the FCC's rules against um, blocking uh, fast lanes, uh, pay, uh, pay prioritization, or charging websites for access. Mm -hmm. right? We've had no blocking rules in the United States since it, you know, the first time they were enforced was uh, 2004 um, by Republican Chairman uh, Michael Powell. Um, so getting rid of that. There is there is no longer a no blocking rule. Uh, Comcast, AT&T, and Verizon can now decide to block websites for whatever reason they want, um, and including objectionable content. Mm -hmm. um, he's replacing those rules um, uh, with uh, or sort of he's enhancing one of the, there was a, another rule in the 2015 um, uh, uh, sort of order which required that ISPs be transparent with their customers about what they do. Right. So that stays. That's basically the only thing that stays. Um, the FCC's also reclassifying uh, broadband providers from common carriers to information services. Um, and due to a number of court rulings um, uh, uh, in response to lawsuits from ISPs who didn't like this oversight, once they're in that category, the FCC literally can't put into uh, those rules. So uh, even if that becomes a problem with blocking, uh, the FCC can't do anything. So they're kicking all this over to the Federal Trade Commission, uh, which can only uh, do two things. One, uh, if an ISP tells you that they're not going to block services at all, and they do, then the FCC can go after them for violating their promise to you. But if it, you know, but when you if you sign up for you know Comcast and in the fine print it says you know we block objectionable content and you don't notice it, uh, they can block whatever sites they want. The mm. FCC can't do anything about that. Uh, the FCC can also go after some anti-competitive uh, um, uh, conduct by ISPs, uh, which sounds nice, but um, anti-competitive conduct uh, is very different in the FTC sort of parlance than it is uh, the way most uh, people think of it. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, the FTC would be fine. Uh, they had a report in 2007 when you know sort of they thought they should be in charge of this, uh, where they said it would be thought it'd be fine if Comcast or a Verizon they struck a, a, a deal with Skype and said, like, you know, Skype will be the exclusive VoIP provider for, for our subscribers, um, and all the other ones would be excluded. Mm. Because they really aren't in that business, right, they're not VoIP providers, mm -hmm. um, that's not anti-competitive. Um, so uh, there's lots of things that uh, ISPs can do uh, that uh, uh, seemed, uh, that would just sort of, to, you know, most net neutrality violations uh, would seem to Americans to be anti-competitive, but the FTC uses a kind of a, a, a you know, a, a more of a an economist kind of view that will allow quite a bit of uh, misconduct. So, okay, so I feel like there, there's sort of three other sort of broad sections to get to. One is, well, well, let's start with actually one sort of last question, setting the table for how we've got here, and then we'll kind of get to what comes yeah. next and how we could potentially fight it. It seems like, and and this is you know, just definitely my read of politics and how policy is made in Washington, which is that it's, you know, it's very much a process that is totally dominated by corporate money. Um, you know, not necessarily even always in a crude way, but just even in a way in terms of like what think, think tanks get funded, what, you know, just the, the process is utterly dominated by money. So the notion that, course public support and public pressure uh, that the FCC experienced even by the way under the Obama administration was significant but I think also just as significant if not much more significant in fact was that it, there it seemed like uh, net neutrality used to be a kind of like a site of an intercorporate battle which is mm -hmm. that the ISPs and obviously you know these sort of like legacy uh, I would say monopolistic uh, companies like Verizon like Comcast that really don't 
provide, I mean, they literally provide essential services, which of which they're totally underregulated, but they're just, you know, they're controlling lanes and essentially just getting private sector taxes on the lanes, right? Like it's a very kind of simple, crude business uh, model. And they see in gutting that neutrality, enormous new opportunities to essentially just sort of privatize commons and generate new new profits out of it. You know, if I don't have to ensure equal lanes, there's a million different packages that I can slice and dice. And, you know, if we're being honest, I mean, maybe some of those things are even like, I don't know, maybe Netflix can figure it out. The NFL can figure it out. You know, they just signed some type of exorbitant, uh, massive deal, I think, with, uh, with Verizon for streaming. So, but the Googles, the Netflix, you know, the companies that sort of represent this Silicon Valley, the sort of new emerging empires of business seemed like they were pretty strongly on the side of net neutrality. Where have they been in this fight? I mean, when I go and check my other show on Patreon, you know, Patreon certainly has a page thrown up. There's, you know, to sign a petition to preserve net neutrality. But I remember several years ago with what I think it was the, uh, the SEPA, forgetting the name of the legislation, but I mean... Oh, SOPA. SOPA. I mean, you know, Google, even with, like, the internet went dark. Wikipedia, I mean, this was a... Those companies really flexed their muscles, um, which... And they have the kind of muscles that speak in Washington, which is money and influence. Where were they during this, and what does that mean uh, for the future of their conduct uh, in a a post-net neutrality world? Uh those are all great questions and I love the lead up. So yes, you know, uh, this is a, you know, the, the broadband market is dysfunctional. 51% of Americans have only one choice of broadband providers, right? right. Um, this, you know, like it's, you know, it, it's not getting any better, right? We're only seeing more consolidation there. Um, and, uh, to your point, yes, this order is really about one specific thing. Uh, ISPs have, for a very long time, looked at the internet and all the money that's made out there, and all the companies that um, are flowing across, uh, you know, the uh, their pipes to get to uh, consumers, and want to get at that money. Right. So in 2005, Ed Whitaker, uh, CEO of SBC, you know, uh, sort of uh, put his foot in his mouth and said, you know, uh, you know, the Google's, Yahoo's of the world, like they're not going to get to use my pipes for free. Uh, <laughs> Um, you know, Verizon in 2013 told a federal court that uh, it was suing over the 2010 rules um, that it should have the right um, to charge any website any amount of money it wanted with no oversight over how much they asked uh, simply to get to users. And if that company didn't pay up, then uh, Verizon could cut them off. And this is the one I love because this is kind of reasoning that only a, a, a telecom could come up with. That didn't count as blocking. Hmm. Right. <laughs> blocking was only if you block someone on content grounds, right? So arbitrarily. They're like, you know, we're, we're totally fine with the no blocking rule as long as we can also do this other thing, right? right. So right. it is all about ISPs. And, and in fact, like, it's the entire, and, and uh, like, that's, I'm not exaggerating because this is actually the sort of pie's rationale, which is that if we let, we got rid of these rules and ISPs made more money, then they'd finally get us rural broadband. Like that's like that's the plan. That right? is I mean, like literally, if you read the order, this is the plan. Right. Um, and okay. so, yeah, I mean, it's pretty crazy. And um, and then sort of like coming back to to your question, yes, early in the, uh, the you know this is a fight that's gone on for a very long time. Google used to be a huge player in uh, you know fighting for this um, mm. in two thousand eight. Uh, it convinced the FCC to attach net neutrality rules to uh, uh, an auction of uh, very valuable spectrum, like basically all the spectrum that's now used for 4G. Uh, not all of it, um, but to one big slice that Verizon bought, and they attached net neutrality rules to it. And uh, in order to, to do that, they had to guarantee that they would spend $4 billion to buy that spectrum if nobody else did. Mm. Uh, so, you know, Google put a $4 billion bet on net neutrality in, in 2008. Right. Um, they're, you know, they say a few things now, um, but let's be honest, like the Googles, Facebooks, Netflix of the world, they can all afford to pay off ISPs. Yep. Um, openness is the strategy 
uh, of the you know of the startups of the insurgents, right? So the ones who are fighting for this are exactly the patriots of the right. world, like the Etsy's, right? The smaller yep. companies, startups, uh, and even the venture capitalists, because like you know they want to build the next Google, right? right? So they're the ones who are telling the FCC that like, hey, this is bad. This is going to increase costs for startups because every startup is going to have to pay off just to load for Verizon or to be in the fast lane so they can be as fast as the, the incumbents. Um, you know, this plan is bad for innovation, uh, for like actual innovation. Uh, because when the FCC says innovation, what they really mean is toll booth. Right, exactly. And that, that's that's yeah. exactly it. Like people need to have that, right. Anytime you hear innovation from Ajit Pai, you should just think of, you know, going down the highway and stopping and throwing change at a toll booth. The only difference being at least the change in that toll booth is actually doing something to benefit your trip. Uh, you yeah. know, it's like that actually is helping the road you're on. Uh, it's versus yeah. like, uh, you know, maybe it's actually more analogous to like, you know, you, sometimes you, I, I remember this, uh, this uh, friend of mine from Jamaica was talking about how like you go to like certain neighborhoods and like, you know, sometimes like guys just pop out with like a machete and they're very friendly, but it's like, yeah, you got to pay the street tax. <laughs> this is more analogous yeah. to what Verizon's doing. Hi, folks. Sam Cedar here. We still need your help on our Patreon page. YouTube ads have come back, but not nearly as much as we had before. So if you can help us out, any little bit helps. Head over to our Patreon page right at this URL, and you'll help us keep helping you by making videos.